Hi, Hi. afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining the uh, Mott McDonald presentation this afternoon, where civil engineering makes a difference. We're running this webinar today in conjunction with Target Jobs. Um, I'm really delighted to have so many of you um, join the session today. Um, so as you can see, we've got a presentation up on the screen. Um, so I'll move on to the next slide and I will talk you through, well, I'll do an intro and then I'll talk you through um, the agenda for this afternoon. Um, so firstly, yeah, myself. So I am Claire O'Neill. I'm the Early Careers Manager at Mott McDonald. Um, and my job in a nutshell is really that I'm responsible for hiring all of our excellent early careers talent across all areas of the business into Mott McDonald. Um, and that's from placements, apprentices, right through to graduates as well. Um, I've been in post, gosh, nearly two years now, um, and it's been a, a really great experience um, joining Mott McDonald and having that oversight of the excellent uh, talent to bring into the business. Really delighted to be hosting this webinar today. Um, you'll be pleased to see that it's not just me talking. Um, there are lots of individuals from Mott McDonald representing both our organisation and giving you an insight into basically what it's like to work here. Um, so the agenda is as follows. We'll look at a variety of career paths within the civil engineering space for graduates. So if you're in your final years of studies, great. Even if you graduated a couple of years ago, also great. So what we'll talk you through today And actually, you'll get to the real heart of the business. You'll discover how we make a difference to society. Um, and you'll, do, you'll, you'll hear that predominantly from one of our senior leaders as well. Um, just a few housekeeping then. So you're all automatically muted as you come into the session. Um, that's just obviously for background noise. And so you can hear all of them so clearly. But what we'd really want to do throughout this session, and actually it's the best way to get the best value, is to ask some questions. There is a question box, so you should see, and I'm going to say it's on my right hand side, but it might be on your left. There's an opportunity to ask questions. We've got a Q&A at the end, but as a question comes, as you're listening to the speakers, please do pop it into the chat. The aim is that hopefully we'll get through all of the questions today, but please don't worry if we don't, we'll have a follow up mechanism to make sure that you get your questions answered. OK, so what else is on the agenda? So as I said, you'll hear from some of our graduates on their own career journey. Um, and actually, some of the things, kind of what projects they've worked on, um, I've also asked them to give a best bit of advice. So here, kind of what they'd say if they could look back and what they wish they'd known as well. So hopefully that's a bit of an interesting take. And then from myself, so as I look after the recruitment side of the business, I'll run you through the application process. So hopefully, all of the stories and experiences that you hear today from the McDonald staff really inspires you and motivates you to want to apply. And I will tell you how to do that. So you'll get some first-hand hints and tips as well from, from myself. Okay, um, so if we move on then. Um, so next up, I'm going to hand over to Sunyan Evans, who's a technical director in our water consultancy division at Mott McDonald, and she's going to talk you through her fabulous career and all the exciting things that she's worked on. Um, so over to you. Thank you very much, Claire. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sunya Evans. I am a technical director and a fellow at Mott McDonald. So I'm absolutely uh, delighted to be here today to share with you the remarkable journey of Mott McDonald the thrilling opportunities that await you in the room of civil engineering. So as Mom McDonald, we are, uh, we are more than just a global engineering, management and development consultancy. We are a collective and dedicated individuals. So whose mission is really to enhance the society and by incorporating social outcomes in all our endeavors. Uh, what we do, we relentlessly strive for excellence and the digital innovation and transforming our client's business, our communities, and the create opportunities for our employee. So we have so many things here and we're really, really proud of. Um, for example, we are ranked number one in Building Magazine, Top 150 Consultants Index, we are ranked ninth in UK Glassdoor Index of the best places to work. 
So we are also recognized as one of inclusive top company in the UK and also won the award for that last week. So in the Times survey, we are one of the top 100 graduate employers. So we have a very diverse workforce. We have 20,000 staff globally and spreading across 160 offices in 50 countries. And concurrently, we are doing 100, doing all the projects in 140 countries. So we are not just a company. So we are actually a team of proud owners. So the status as particularly staff owned company isn't just a fact. So it's really a source of really immense pride. We all feel so you know, proud of, and it's also a testament of our collective commitment. So we operate in various sectors. So we list six here, advisory, cities buildings, energy, international development, transportation, water and environment. That's where seats, water and environment are also served globally as well. So each sector presents its unique challenges and most importantly, awards, rewards too. Advisory. So at Mott McDonald, our advisory team is not just about offering counsel, it's about delivering really holistic solutions that drive change. So we have been instrumental in enhancing healthcare infrastructures in Turkey and innovating education pathways in the USA and the leading global initiatives to combat antibiotic resistance superbug. This is really emerging challenge um, facing globally. Buildings and the cities. Our architects, our, our engineers, are not just designing structures, but are crafting landmarks that really define the cityscape globally. From luxurious apartment and to state of art hospitals and iconic stadiums. So we are actually shaping a world where every building tells a story. Energy. So in the field of energy, we are not just participants, but pioneers and leading the charge towards a sustainable future. So our portfolio boasts of cutting edge projects in wind, solar, hydropower, nuclear energy that are setting benchmarks globally. How about international development? Many of you might be interested as well, in addition to those what I mentioned. So we don't just participate in international development, we shape it with tailored solutions aim to poverty alleviation. That's really, really, to me, so important. And also promoting and good governance and capacity building. What is importantly, every project is a step toward the world where basic services are accessible to all the communities around the globe. Transport, what do we do? Our transport sector it's not limited creating the pathway while building basic connections that bridge the distance. So we connect people and the places. So we work on everything from roads to air and the sea transport and every project en engineered for tomorrow. Water, that's sex, the sector I'm in. So we are just not just engineers, we are guardians of the world's water. What is water is life. It's so important. Nobody can survive without water. So we're so proud to be in this field. Myself, so proud to be in this field. We're working on everything from flood modeling to water quality to wastewater treatment. And each project helps to secure our water for the future. It's not only for today. And each initiative is really geared towards ensuring water security for generations. So personally, I have had the privilege of being part of the Mott McDonald family for over 25 years. 
and contributing to more than 200 projects in over 20 countries. And these projects have not only really challenged me professionally, but also allowed me to make a tangible difference in the lives of the communities that I worked globally. So the projects are so varied and uh, interesting, satisfying and rewarding. So I thoroughly enjoy all my career in McDonald. So furthermore, the beauty of civil engineering really lies in its direct impact on people's life. So that's why I will make a difference to people's life, to the ecosystem. And the infrastructure we design, build, shapes communities and the drives economy and directly influence the quality of life of millions of people. So here are just a few examples, some of the projects I'm most proud of, and some you see how attractive it is for people to involve in the water sector, in the engineering overall. And um, some of the projects I'm really proud of, including bring water to people and wildlife parks in Africa. So that project improved the diversity and the ecosystem. And also designing hydraulic structures to protect Shakespeare's theater from flooding. How wonderful that is. And Shakespeare is world famous. I uh, also contributed to landmark projects like landing cable car across the River Thames. And some of you might be on it already. That was built and opened before the Olympics in 2012. If you haven't, I would invite you to go to try it. And uh, it's good fun and nice to be involved and contribute to that landmark project. And also contributing to multiple award-winning projects, the Tidal Barrier, called Boston Barrier, along the East Coast. And also writing international guidance, national guidance, and authoring books. So at Mont we are committed to make a difference as civil engineers. So we have the unique opportunity to shape the world we live in. And people often ask me, so what has made you stay at Mont McDonald for so long? The answer is very simple. From later on the graduate, you can hear from them to see their answers. So what's my answer? This really simple. It's the people. It's fascinating projects. And Mont McDonald's investment in its people. And the company have provided me with opportunities for continuous learning, professional growth, and the chance to work with diverse team of dedicated professionals around the globe. And the supportive and inclusive culture at Mont McDonald is something I truly, truly value. So as we look forward to 2024, we just now are still end of January, we are so excited to welcome a new graduate to our team. So what I would believe, we believe that fresh perspectives like people online, you can feel innovation. So we are committed to providing a platform so where your ideas can come to life. So our graduate role offers unique opportunities to work on challenging projects, learn from industry experts and build a really, really rewarding career. So, so I encourage you all to consider a career in civil engineering. It can be mechanical, electronical as well. That's all classified as civil engineering at Mark McDonald. So as I said earlier, it's not just about buildings and the bridges. It, it is about making a difference in the world. So thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to your questions later. So now I hand over to Patrick. Yes, hi all. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, I'm Patrick Hargreaves. Uh, I'm a graduate tunnel engineer at Mott, at Mott McDonald. Uh, I studied uh, civil and structural engineering at Newcastle University. I was originally on a BEng with a year in industry, uh, but I switched to an MEng mid uh, mid degree. 
Um, I joined MOTS in September 2022, having graduated in, September, in uh, 2021. I took a year out to do a bit of traveling and uh, enjoy myself before the career started. And I, I joined the Tunnels team in Reading. Um, despite Tunnels coming under the transportation unit, as, uh, as shown there, um, the majority of my work is actually on uh, utilities, uh, utility tunnels, um, with one major outlier to that, which uh, I will, you can probably see on the projects that I've listed there. Um, so the some of the projects that I've worked on, I've selected these just because uh, it, it's not all of the projects I've worked on, despite being with the company for only uh, less than a year and a half at this point. Um, I've managed to work on several projects of varying sizes, but these were uh, some of the ones that really stood out for me so far. Um, so net zero T side. Uh, so ha having having a degree that um, heavily focused on sustainability, as I'm sure a lot of you uh, can relate to, um, this project uh, really felt worthwhile for me. Um, it was a carbon capture scheme in T side, uh, a major industrial and petrochemical cluster. Um, it involved two trenchless crossing designs with two different types of tunneling techniques. Um, it, it really opened my eyes to uh, to what what tunneling involves, and, um, and it was a, a lot of multidiscipline work with involving a lot of um, not just tunnels but also a lot of utilities, um, a bit of highways, uh, lots of different teams of people and expertise that um, that I, I don't really tend to touch. Um, it also gave me a great opportunity. Um, we, we, I joined this project having only been with the company for two months. It was the first project that I started. Um, and it took me up to Teesside on a, a three-day site visit um, where we met the whole design team, which was uh, from various offices and various companies across the entire country. Um, the, the top picture, uh, not, not the picture of me, sorry, some the middle picture on the side there is actually us on the site visit um, in the middle of a big field where one of the shafts for the tunnel was going to be. Um, the second project I've got listed there is uh, CESRO, uh, that stands for the Southeast Strategic Reservoir Option. Um, it was a flood alleviation scheme in Oxford, in Oxfordshire, um, which would store Thames water, um, the River Thames flow uh, when it was in peak flow conditions um, in a huge 150 million metre cubed reservoir. Um, there were two sections of tunnel, both of which were at feasibility stage that I was looking into. Uh, one was a, one was like a long stretch. Um, it was wet, so the tunnel would flow inside. The water would flow inside the tunnel, and uh, the main investigation here was looking at whether the tunnel could withstand the internal pressures that it was uh, that it would experience from the water flow at, at peak flow. And the second section of tunnel was a shorter section that would go underneath the embankment of the reservoir. And here we were looking at a settlement that the uh, tunnel would experience from the surcharge of the embankment. Um, it was really good, and really, re a really um, a, a technical project. Um, whereas Brent Cross, the next project, um, here I was uh, looking more from a project management side. Um, Having only been with the company for about a year, I was put in, in charge of this small diameter, small length crossing um, at a feasibility level. Um, and uh, I was here, I was managing the budget, I was managing the task distribution, um, as well as the delivery of the project and client interface on the project, which was a lot of responsibility, but it was a great opportunity for me when I, uh, when I was at that stage. So I, I really enjoyed it. And um, I, I can't list off the projects that I've worked on without listing uh, HS2, um, which is the probably the, it could well be the largest infrastructure project I work on in my career. Um, and I'm currently working on it at the moment. Um, I am, I'm not doing any uh, technical design. Um, the actual section of the project I'm working on doesn't even have any tunnels on, despite that being my job title. Um, but here I'm working as a, uh, on, on the design management, um, where I'm helping coordinate between multiple disciplines varying from uh, bridges to highways um, with utilities, drainage, landscape architecture, all of them are involved and um, 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 it's my job to to, uh, to make sure that they're collaborating and help them um, help them organize between themselves to make sure that different sections of um, uh, 
their projects are, are interfacing correctly. Um, so why do I love working at Mott McDonald? Um, the opportunities. Um, I've, I've been with a company less than a year and a half and I've just given you four examples of projects I've worked on. That, yeah, every single one of them has been a fantastic opportunity. Um, I've, it's, the, it's just been great the diversity of the projects I've uh, I've been able to work on um, and also the site visits that it's given like uh, the bottom three pictures there are from a site visit to a HS2 site um, under Houston that one that's shown there um, I wasn't on this project at that point I was just given the opportunity to go and to go and visit the site which is one of the opportunities you get working for a company like Mont McDonald and then the um, it says one piece of advice I would give myself graduating. Um, I've, I've given two, um, but uh, because I think they're, they're very important. Uh, do not be apprehensive when you're applying um, for, I don't know why I put for, I meant for roles. Uh, I had no experience in tunnels when I first, uh, when I applied for the role. Um, I found that the after starting, I was nervous about coming in on my first day i thought i might have been out of my depth i didn't have an experience in the uh, in the sec in the in the sector in tunneling um but I've, i quickly found out that they weren't looking for any technical expertise um, what they were looking for was the skills you picked up throughout your degree and they were mots were here to teach me um the technical side of it um, and that would have really settled my nerves if i'd have known that before starting um, and when you do get a role, um, just don't stop asking questions. Um, it's so cliched, the whole, uh, there's no stupid question, but there, the, there really is no such thing as a stupid question. If you've got a question, just ask it straight away. Um, some of my biggest regrets when starting were being nervous about asking questions, thinking it made me look stupid. It just made me look stupid when I asked it further down the line and I should have asked it earlier. So that's, yeah, my, they're my, two main pieces of advice um yeah and that's that's all from me uh, i'll now pass on oh Sorry. hi <laughs> um hi my name's Inez um and i am a graduate civil engineer so i specialize in hydraulics um specifically cfd um, so originally I started doing a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. I think I was actually on the MEng course with a year in industry. Um, and then I did a couple of internships with MOTS in my second and third year, at which point I kind of thought, you know what, I know what I'm going to do now. Um, and I wanted to specialize in hydraulics, um, at which point I said, no, no more concrete for me. Um, and so I went and did a master's instead in um, fluid mechanics at Imperial. Um, and yeah, so it was really good um, getting that kind of experience um, and being able to yeah, deviate off the original course that I'd planned um, and go in and specialize in fluid mechanics. Um, and 100% that was because of kind of the previous experience that I picked up at MOTS um, doing my internships and kind of working out what path I wanted to go down. Um, so yeah, now I'm part of the CFD team. So for those that don't know what CFD is, it's computational fluid dynamics. Um, so I work on the CFD team um, within the pipes and networks team um, within water consultancy division, um, but also I'm kind of dragged into some projects that aren't always on pipes or networks. Um, so the main project that I'm working on at the moment is a higher river tunnel, um, which is kind of like uh, Thames Tideway, if you guys know about Thames Tideway. Um, so it's effectively a, a backup massive backup drainage system um, to the existing network um, and this is obviously in Pittsburgh instead of London um, and so I'm doing a lot of the hydraulic modeling so you can see some of um, the work that I've done um, I think a lot of people just like CFD because of the nice pictures that um, it comes out with um, and I think that's probably what drew me to CFD initially um, but I always love learning new software um, and so so yeah that's that's now what I do full-time which is great um, I also worked in 
on a project in um, Neom in Saudi Arabia um, and Sinyan actually um, oversaw the work that I was doing there. Um, so this was like a slightly, this was 1D instead of 3D modeling um, and it was all about um, the thermal impact on chlorine decay and that was something that I'd never really done before. Like I've done a lot of um, fluids but I'd never covered um, chlorine and chemicals as well. Um, so that was a really good learning experience. Um, and I also worked on a distribution chamber um, in Glastonbury. And this was actually probably one of the first projects. I've only been here kind of four months or so, um, but this is the first project which I pretty much did all the CFD by myself for, um, which I really didn't think would happen so quickly. Um, within the kind of four months that I've been here but it's it's just really great like the support and how much everyone's helped me so far um I didn't kind of see myself being able to do the whole project pretty much by myself and kind of write the whole technical note and executive summary and everything um so I'm quite proud of that um and as I say um one of the great things about MOTS is you're just constantly learning and I loved picking up new software at uni. I think a lot of people don't, um, but it was one of my favorite parts is kind of learning new things um, and new software. And it's great that now I'm <laughs> getting paid to do that. Um, but yeah, another reason that I love MOTS is the people. I mean, you've heard it already, kind of everyone's so friendly here, um, but also not just kind of the people you work with, but also um, other people in the office. I go and play netball with, um, I go and play football with. I've got kind of extracurricular activities within MOTS, maybe three or four days a week, which is really nice. Um, so it's a great way, like if you're moving to a completely new city, like you make friends so quickly. And honestly, I, I don't see myself having done that at any other company. Um, and I just, when I first did my internship at MOTS I was like this is I love the people here and like the community that is here it was really nice and that was during Covid as well um, and so obviously um, at a bit of a disadvantage there anyway um, so yeah the one piece of advice that I would give myself um, is if you have the opportunity to still be doing internships do them and don't just stick to one team kind of fish about um, and then be picky about what the final job is that you accept. Um, I think I tried out in two different teams during my internships here um, and they were they were good and I really liked the people, um, but I knew it wasn't kind of exactly what I wanted and now I've landed exactly where I want to be. Um, so yeah you can be really picky um sorry i'm about to be kicked out of a meeting room um so i'll just pass on quickly but um yeah um just know what you want and ask all the questions in the interview um and you will be able to find exactly what you want here um yeah i'll pass on so just before i get kicked out hello hey um my name's scott mclafty I'm a graduate civil engineer I'm based in our Glasgow office and I have been working from, from what's for about a year and a half now, just under a year and a half, after I graduated in June 2022. Um, yeah, and then I studied an MA in civil engineering at the University of Strathclyde, which is a local university to the office in Glasgow. Um, but a, a lot of people from the Glasgow office come to the University of Strathclyde. We have like a um, a wee bit of a rival, rivalry between us and the University of Glasgow who can compete to have the most intake um, from the competing universities in the Glasgow office. Um, I think Strathclyde's winning for the moment. Um, I currently work in our power processing nuclear division, which is really just it's a nuclear division which works within the energy unit in Mount McDonald. Hence the reason I don't have any nice pictures like my other colleagues that I've been presenting to you. Um, the work I do kind of restricts what I can take pictures of. So I ha I can promise you, but I have been extremely busy for the last year and a half um, as I'm about to go through all these projects. So just even though there's no photographic evidence, there is that I definitely have been very busy with MOTS. So projects I've worked on, um, so I've worked for different clients um, and 
actually across different projects, but undertaking similar types of work, um, doing condition surveys, LC28 inspections and structural inspections. So these are very like, different um, in terms of what their product is and the reason we conduct them. So condition surveys are general to all buildings. So a lot of buildings, your railway stations, uh, post office terminals, all these places, they'll have condition surveys undertaken to make sure the buildings fit work in order. And that happens on nuclear sites as well because they have regular buildings that are offices and um, yeah, these buildings need inspected. We also do LC28 inspections, which are specific to nuclear sites and they are a legal requirement for nuclear sites to undertake. And um, they are normally under undertaken between condition surveys and LC28 inspections at the same time. Recently, I don't know if you have seen in the news, but there's been a big increase in the awareness of RAC or RAAC, which is reinforced autoclave aerated concrete um, and the dangers it, uh, it possesses. And there's been collapses in schools, which kind of spurred this on. And it's common in a lot of sites throughout the UK. And the ONR who regulate the, the nuclear sites have been making a big push since there's been this awareness raised of it to have it inspected. So that's why we've also been undertaking structural inspections, which are a much more detailed and thorough inspection, which may also include uh, inspections by our specialist teams and materials. So you get to work with um, people from across the industry with different ranges of expertise. My inspections took me across the UK. So whilst I'm based in the Glasgow office, um, I've been actually in the Midlands a lot. Um, I've been down to the south coast. I'm actually just heading back to the south coast as well. Um, yeah, so and a lot of nuclear sites are actually on the are on the sea fronts. So if you enjoy a sea breeze, then you can come join the nuclear sector. You you get to see beaches a lot, um, and they're normally quite secluded. Other projects I've worked on. So I've worked on um, another project for an existing nuclear site. Um, I've worked as part of a big multidisciplinary team to produce a new new building on this site, already existing site. Um, that comes with its challenges. You get to you get to learn a lot of um, different systems of work um, and dealing with different clients and um, different expectations. The nuclear industry comes with a lot of strict um, guidelines and that, that feeds into your work, but it's um, it's a good way of it's a good way of introducing yourself to all the um, systems that you could expect to find when dealing with big clients. So even the systems that you would normally find in like big um, multi multi um, discipline jobs across the UK, like HS two and stuff, are applied to even quite small projects in nuclear. So you get the same kind of rigorous um, testing that goes goes in um, for all of these. Uh, sites and building projects that we are undertaking. Additionally to that, um, whilst working in nuclear, I've also had the opportunity to be involved in bidding work. So something I didn't really learn a lot of in university was the commercial side of civil engineering. And that's something that I've, I was basically brand new to when I came into Mott McDonald and I didn't have a good, I didn't have, I didn't have a thorough understanding of business. And it's not really something that is taught within civil engineering courses. But when I came to Walt McDonald, I was given the opportunity to get involved with bidding work and going and seeing how work is won, what goes into pricing, how you prepare for jobs, how you resource jobs, um, all of this. And uh, some of them are massive undertakings, like, and the project fees are massive, and it's a lot to deal with. It's a lot of resources to deal with. Um, so it's great getting to see all the workings of how you would compete against the other companies that are in your sector. And you get a very well-rounded picture and that's actually really good foundations to build off of. So if you're in the nuclear industry as a civil engineer, you don't just get confined to civil engineering. I've also done projects that are smaller than that. That's only These are all the kind of bigger ones that I spent a lot of my time on, but I've also been able to get involved in seismic, which is something you don't really get to get involved with in the UK because we don't get much seismic activity in the UK. But when it comes to nuclear, it is something that's considered. So um, you get to get you get a lot of specialists in seismic qualification. So if you're interested in learning about niche areas of civil engineering as well, so nuclear is definitely the place to do that. So why I love working in Mount McDonald 
I think I'm probably the fourth person to say this now in a row, but it is the people. I mean, uh, you must know that we're, there's something there then if I am the fourth person to say that. Um, but yeah, it is, it's the people. There's just, there's no barriers. There's no social hierarchy. There's none of that. Um, I have worked in pla- workplaces like that before and it just it just doesn't exist here. It's You could walk up to anybody and anybody's well, more than willing to stop and help you. Um, anybody in your team they're all or they're all going to give you the time of day um yeah it's the people are just so friendly that you you'll settle in within like a week <laughs> and you feel like if you will yeah I, I don't know else much else i can say about it the people are the reason that uh, i really love working at mott mcdonald one piece of advice i'd give myself from graduating would be to be confident in my ability everyone is continually learning throughout their career so what I mean by that is that um, when you come, when I came into the job, I thought there was, I felt that there was this barrier between what I was taught at university and what I was going to be expected to know when I came into the industry, and um, I didn't know if I was going to be able to overcome that. I didn't know if I was going to be able to meet it. And then when I actually joined Mott McDonald, I realised that that barrier never existed in the first place. Um, uh, my buddy would be able to tell you that. When before I joined, I had been emailing them and I said, is there any pre-work I can do? Is there any reading up I can do? Just to make sure that I was fully prepared for my first day. And he said to me, he's like, Scott, just calm down, go enjoy your holidays. When you start on your first day, that you can, well, you'll be fine. And I was, and it was, I was completely fine. Everybody is continually learning throughout their entire career. And Mott McDonald, even the people at the highest levels are always learning and nobody's ever going to expect you to know everything at any level. So yeah just be confident in yourself everybody has something they can contribute to a team everybody has their own lived experiences and that means that you all can bring something to a team no matter what no matter how much knowledge you have yeah so that is me uh, i'll pass you on now oh sorry i was on mute thank you um hi i'm isabel um i am an assistant civil engineer so i've been at moxford about three and a bit years now. Um, so I did start as a graduate and um, I studied civil and structural engineering at Newcastle as well, um, just like Patrick. <laughs> and um, I finished in sort of July 2020. So I started here in the following, that October. Um, and I work in the special services division, um, which sits within the transportation unit, but the products, the projects are really varied and I have worked on a lot of projects that actually don't really relate to transportation. Um, I suppose special services division is a bit um, fluffy. It doesn't really explain what we actually do. So um, special services, we work on sort of specialist parts of bigger projects. So um, we do a lot of analysis. Um, sort of FEA models and more advanced analysis, as well as asset management. Uh, we have a materials technology team who look at a lot of concrete and mixes. And their focus at the moment is um, is a lot on the sustainability of using concrete and how we can reduce the carbon. Um, and a lot of sort of extending existing assets, so any existing structures, looking at how we can keep their life going so that they last longer. Um, so that brings me on to sort of the projects I've worked to, I worked on, I suppose. So um, one big one, uh, which I've been working on for a long time, is Dartford Tunnel. Um, this, the photos on the left there of the steel arm and the um, the other view of it from um, with the person in the middle, those are um, of a bracket I designed to support some of the existing steel work that's in the tunnel. Um, for if it like deteriorates further in future and was to um the end was to fail then these brackets would support would support that steel work in the tunnel and um that's sort of a project that i've been working on for probably the last two two years um but while i've been working on that i've had other projects coming in and out so uh finsbury park reservoir is actually the photo at the bottom there um underneath one of the parks in Finsbury Park there is a big Victorian arched arch built reservoir and um, the, it, because it's not filled anymore they want it to last and they want it to stay up but they also want to be able to host festivals and 
events on top of the park and so I had to do a assessment of how much load can be taken on the field before the arches would fail or crack um, and how to monitor that so that was one of my models I built for assessing that and that's for both crowd loading and lorry loads um, so that was a really interesting project and I learned a lot from that because I did this model sort of all on my own and so uh, I'd taken experience from previous projects I'd worked on and just applied it into doing this and then was able to just ask for advice rather than sort of be handheld through it um, I suppose similar to what Ines was saying earlier um, I think MOTS really provides you with a good opportunity of like growth fairly quickly and because there's always enough support there you don't feel out of your depth which is really useful um, and then another one I've put on here is Heathrow main tunnel so I was working doing principal inspections of the tunnel which is just every however many years you go through the tunnel and you check the condition and check it hasn't deteriorated any um, sort of remedial works that you're doing you'd highlight and that just gave me a lot of really good site experience so between that and Dartford I've probably been on site I don't know upwards of 20 times in the past year um, because of installations of those brackets and also for these principal inspections I probably went about eight times and um, the first four hours with someone senior and then they let me be the senior person the next time and bring our year in industry student with me um, so again like making sure we get the opportunities uh, to grow which is really useful so I suppose that, that also highlights the reason I like working at MOTS so as everyone else has said it <laughs> the people are a really big reason so I find that all the people as well as being really friendly and approachable are like are really really knowledgeable and they know a lot about their subject area and are always open for you asking questions and they'll point you in the direction of useful resources or sit you down and explain something if you're not sure um, and as I've said here they really enable you to progress so um, people and my managers have been very keen the minute it seems like I'm getting to a level to sort of just push me over that level just to make sure that that I'm getting that push that maybe you wouldn't ask for yourself and that's I think really valuable um, and then the other thing is yeah just getting to experience so many projects um, this is just three that I've mentioned but I think I've worked on about 10 maybe 12 projects since being here in three years so um, it's a lot <laughs> which is really good and I like that variation and they, some of them have been small like the Finsbury Park that was only a few months work and some of them have been bigger and more ongoing um, like Dartford Tunnel or I did a bit of work on HS2 designing noise barriers so it's very varied um, and yeah very similarly to um, what some other people have said is I wouldn't worry too much about what you don't know when you join the company I think you will learn most of what you actually use when you're on the job and from learning from other people and no one's expecting you to know everything um, and I think that that applies to when you're interviewing as well you just the main thing people are looking for is that you ha are able to apply the knowledge that you do have and that you have sort of a practical way of working and um, that you think through things logically so that's the main thing yeah right I'll um, pass you on Brilliant. Thanks, Isabel. Um, so thanks all. Um, it was really great to hear, obviously, um, your experiences as graduates. And obviously, there's some common themes that I think you've all spoken about, like the people, probably one of the main reasons um, that you all have stayed and applied for uh, graduate roles and not with adults. That's great. And really interesting to hear, obviously, from Simeon as well around that kind of longevity of a career at McDonald's and what that can entail. And I think Definitely one of the things that stood out for me there was the benefit of being in a global consultancy um, and some of those real kind of international um, projects that we get to work on as well. Um, so we've been quite representative, actually, in terms of those graduates that we've had um, on the webinar today. who have done a great job around explaining a bit more detail um, about their roles and what they do do day to day and the bits of the business that they work in. Um, we can appreciate sometimes that there's lots of choice. 
And actually, that's great. But I think just having some context around, OK, so what does an actual graduate civil engineer and water do? Um, what, could I, what roles are available in transportation, for example? Um, so what's really great is that our remaining 2024 civil engineering roles include all of those lists that we have um, in front of you on the screen today. What I've also done is listed out the locations. Um, majority, as you can see, are obviously UK wide. So we've got a North presence, Southeast, and, and then everything in between, really. So these roles are currently advertised on our graduate portal on our early careers website, ready for applications for a 2024 intake. Um, so these are our current live roles within the civil engineering space. Um, I'll talk about eligibility, actually, because there's been a few questions on the chat. So to apply for these roles, yes, we consider graduate roles to be less than 12 months experience, but that doesn't include a industrial placement and internships. What we say with the 12 months experience is anything after you've graduated. So have you gone and worked as a civil engineer for 12 plus months after graduation? That's what we're saying in terms of eligibility. All of the roles do require an undergraduate BEng at least in a civil, structural or general engineering degree discipline. Um, I know there's been some questions on the master's side, but predominantly if you've got an undergraduate in civil or structural engineering or mechanical in some respects as well, that could equate to being an eligible degree discipline. Okay, so in terms of how to apply for these roles then, um, and actually when I was sort of writing this slide, I thought this is actually really reflective. Our application process is really simple and straightforward. I've been in early careers recruitment for a number of number of years now. And since I joined McDonald's, quite surprised at actually the fewer amount of stages enabling you to get a, a graduate offer. We don't run assessment centres. Um, we have a process that is technically three stage and the final stage resulting in an offer. We run a very uh, aligned strengths based assessment. And I think you'll have heard from the grads today, a lot of what we assess on is skills and potential. And I think the common theme of advice uh, from, from everyone actually, you don't need to be an expert. We're not looking for you to come in and absolutely know everything. So our selection process is very much based on strength, potential. What do you enjoy doing? What are you good at? And could you come in and do that? So the first stage of the process is you register. Obviously, you're interested in one of those roles that we had on the previous slide. And then you will go through an online strengths assessment. This is a combination of like scenario questions, for example, multiple choice questions and um, some numerical questions as well. I think given the technical kind of background that we require, there's a few uh, numerical questions in there as well. What's great this year is we've actually got a preparation hub. So we have a preparing for your future practice hub where before you do the real test, you can actually go online and have a look at some of the example questions um, and get some feedback on your performance. The reason that we've got that is we, you know, we really want to enable you to succeed. I think sometimes there's a perception that companies or employers are trying to trick people in the recruitment process. But we're really not. Our aim is to hire. We want to hire. It makes my job easier if I hire. Um, so what we're trying to do is enable you to have those tools and techniques to, to go through the application process. So there is a benchmark in a equivalent that you need to meet in order to progress to the next stage, which is an application form. Our application form has uh, some general questions around sort of motivations, I suppose, better way to explain. So why do you want to work at Mott McDonald? I mean, hopefully what you've heard today has really inspired you and kind of given you some food for thought in terms of the reasons why other people have chose. But what we really like to see and really good applications, this is a hint and sip, bring your hint and tip, sorry, bring your true self. Um, you know, we want to really see the, the real you and value why and your reasons for wanting to be an engineer and specifically wanting to be an engineer at McDonald's. We do ask a question around how your skills or experience, and when we say experience, we mean work experience, we mean projects that you've worked on, we mean volunteering. We don't necessarily mean industry like for like experience, but generally your life experiences. Um, how are they relevant to the role and you know what what's motivated you and inspired you to want to apply? So that what you from the application form. 
myself and the early careers team we read them so we do actually read them we read all of these applications and we get hundreds hundreds and thousands actually um, and then we select the higher performing ones and we send them over for the um, hiring managers to look at and then they'll tell us who they want to interview the interview process at McDonald is a strengths-based interview so it follows on from that initial stage of the recruitment process um, and again, there's some technical questions built in, and please don't be put off by that. Um, they're not technical in the sense of a qualified engineer and lots of detailed knowledge. It's generally an understanding around kind of general engineering concepts, I suppose, is the best way to explain. Um, and then the rest of the questions are strength based and that strength base is what you enjoy in and what you enjoy doing. And can you come in and enjoy that role and, and bring that skill to the role at Mott McDonald's? and then do well at the interview, and that's an offer. Um, so quite a straightforward process. As I said, it's quite one, somebody asked a question around timing. Um, we don't have a deadline. So there are those roles that are on the pre-screen, they're advertised now. As soon as we get enough applications or we fill, we close that role. So actually we can work through, as an early careers team, this process quite quickly. So as quick as you can be to attend an interview, we can, we can move you through as well. So just looking at the questions now then, so hopefully that's given you an insight into the process. Um, I think I'll just start off just, I know some of you are quite recent in, um, any advice or hints and tips that you'd give those on the webinar today? Um, so this is aimed at our graduates for applying um, that you, you know, for your experience through the recruitment process. And then I'll look at the questions. Inez, I think you were quite recent. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> How did um, you find the recruitment process? Yeah, I mean, I think because I'd already done an internship, mm. I kind of knew um, a contact in HR who I'd been talking to through my internship. So I kind of said what I wanted to do. And then um, the I think it was Lucy in HR, she kind of pointed me in the di right direction to find which team I should apply for. So yeah, I mean, HR are really quick to respond. So if you don't know kind of what specifically they actually mean, kind of email uh, HR, tell them what they're interested in, what you're interested in. And I'm sure HR will find you something. Um, Lovely, thank you. So one of the other questions that we've got then is probably around, well, it's quite a good question actually. What is an average day like for a graduate engineer at Mott McDonald? I'll have to list up on this one. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I get into the office around uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock. Um, there tends to be a couple of meetings throughout the day. So there's uh, there's like preparation for their meetings as well as just uh, a couple of hours of um, sitting down and actually doing work. Um, there's all socialising dotted in about because as has been mentioned so many times throughout this webinar, um, the people around you are fantastic. <laughs> so you always, um, so there's always a bit of socialising going on. Um, and then uh, there's loads of stuff, like extracurricular going on as well. Um, I know I'm based at the Reading office and we have a sports and social uh, committee and at least once a week there'll be something on on one of the lunch times um i know coming up next week i think we've got like a a, a painting lunch time so there'll be like arts and crafts out in the kitchen and we'll be decorating tote bags apparently um and then most thursdays we'll go to we have a, a pub map someone creates a map and on thursdays after work we'll go down and uh, we'll go to the pub and um, I know personally, on Tuesdays, I go and play uh, Aussie Rules football um, because someone in the office, uh, an Australian guy in the office, introduced me to the sport and uh, said I'd probably enjoy it. Um, so now I've started playing Aussie Rules for the past year of my life. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it expands further than just work and the projects you're on. Um, I guess an important thing in there as well that, um at least once a week maybe twice a week i'll also like sit down and do some chargeship work um because of you 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 need to keep ticking over on your work towards um chargeship um if, if that's one of your aims um so yeah that will also be something i have to incorporate in my day-to-day -day work but yeah it's, it's it's not just project work it's, it's far from it there's a lot more going on than just that 
Fab, thank you. Isabel, what are your, I suppose you're slightly further on in terms of timing. What's yeah. your average day as an assistant civil engineer? Um, I suppose I, in comparison to a graduate, I have a bit more of my day filled with, I tend to have like someone that's working under me now. So one of the more recent graduates is doing some work for me. And so part of that day will be checking in with them. Um, either sitting next to them in the office and talking or if we're online like having a team's call seeing where they're at with their work and then um, I'm starting to take on more project management and sort of a commercial side of things so probably doing a bit of tracking of like where the projects are at budget wise or task wise um, and then also I'm still doing a lot of calculations and uh, report writing so there will be quite a lot of my day that is taken up by actual work, um, whether that is calculations, researching, report writing, um, project calls, like quite often we'll have a call with the client or just me and my project manager having a discussion. Um, so not dissimilar, but just a little bit more of the, I suppose more like man managerial side of things um, thrown in there as well. But it luckily still with some technical, <laughs> otherwise it, would, it might, yeah, <laughs> there's no point. I, I would get a bit bored if I wasn't doing any of that. So it's, it's a nice mix. Good. And it's great to see, obviously, and, and for those to hear that there is that progression yeah, on the yeah, there is. kind of route as well. So when did you start having that line management experience then? How far into role? Um, so I'm not unless, I'm not a line manager yet. It's more in like a project, as, a project okay. aspect, yeah. but um, I would say the first person was a year in industry student who finished in September so it was last last year um, earlier last year and that actually started with mainly with the site work where I was doing those principal inspections in Heathrow um, just I think they saw that I'd I'd taken on the work and it was going well and they yeah told me to take her along with me and then it it then sort of just carried on from there brilliant thank you and Scott, I know you're technically part of like MY5, it feels, but um, what's your average day like that you can tell us about? Oh, is it lots of uh, mobile phones in sealed bags and we... Uh... Well, actually, to be honest, <laughs> no, not, in the, not in the office, on site it is mobile phones and oh. sealed lockers, um, but uh yeah in the office it is very relaxed so we are in our, we uh, sit in our own section so we have like we're behind like a locked door um because Glasgow is kind of one of the big hubs for nuclear and Mott McDonald as well as at the Ultraman office and stuff so we have our own section which is always good because we always have our own seats that we can book um, even though we're competing now in nuclear to see who can book the seats quickest and um, to see who can get in the office but yeah um, so yeah our uh, our days vary um, widely kind of depending on what project you're on just because they're so in the nuclear industry we're just um, involved with so many different stages so we're involved with the decommissioning new build operational manufacturing defense so and all them all them different projects come with different expectations and um, some will be more mechanical led some will be more safety led um, but from a civil engineering point of view and the projects i'm involved in um, my day can consists of mostly report writing at when i'm in the office or um, I've also been involved in the project management side as well for this, uh, for some of these inspection works. So communicating with the client, the client quite frequently, which is actually quite unusual, um, especially at my stage of my career, to be communicating with the client so frequently. Um, but it's great experience um, getting to go on phone calls with heads of engineering for massive companies. Um, yeah, it's not something you normally get exposed to at this level, but it is um, for the work that I've been doing. So yeah, it's, it varies. Um, and yeah, like uh, Patrick was saying as well, there's so many extracurricular stuff going on as well. There's always like wellbeing calls as well um, that, there's, that happen during the day run by the wellbeing team. Um, there's learning and development lunches. So yeah, it varies. Brilliant. Thanks, Thank Scott. Um, there's been a few more questions around kind of eligibility for the graduate role. So I'll, I'll just go back and, and sort of reiterate the point. So. For a graduate role, it's an entry level role. So we want you to have the relevant degree discipline, both at undergraduate or masters, and no more than 12 months relevant experience. Um, and it's that relevant experience that is key. So you could be working, you know, you could finish your degree and then go and work in Amazon, for example, and then do that for two years and then come back, that's fine. It's this relevant experience. 
And I think if you have got experience, ultimately you want a salary that favours that experience. Our graduate salaries are entry level. So everybody starts on the same salary um, in terms of location, for example, and then slightly higher if you've got a master's. So um, it's not that we don't value the experience, we absolutely do, but it just sits in a different part of talent acquisition. So if you have got experience over 12 months, then we'd encourage you to look at an experienced higher role, not a graduate role. Um, there's also another question around other entry level and different opportunities outside of engineering. Absolutely. Um, we are by nature and engineering consultancy, but we have lots of other roles. Um, we work in the environment space, so we have things like social value consultancy, we have project management roles, we have um, kind of data analyst roles, lots and lots. At the moment, given where we are in the early career cycle, what roles we have remaining for 2024 predominantly sit in the engineering space. So the aim of this webinar was to really promote these roles. Um, so, Conscious of time, so I think just one final question. Um, in terms of, as we've asked the average day, so what would you want to tell an undergrad version of yourself then to best prepare for your future career? So maybe one thing from each grad. Um, and Zunyan, if you're still here as well. Um, so Patrick, do you want to go first? How to best prepare for your future career? Uh, yeah, wow. Um... Wow. Uh, well, then, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's all right. Uh, how to best prepare? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe just uh, don't stop asking questions. But that's probably mm -hmm. more from once you start. Um, from a, from a pre part, I probably covered it in, in when I was uh, in my section of the presentation. Um, whereas, uh, don't don't feel limited by your technical ability. Uh, you're expected to learn the technical skills once you start. You're not expected to come in with them. Um, that would have been a big nerve settler for me. Yeah, thank you. Isabel? I was trying to think of something else that's not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of preparing for for starting work or for applying, I suppose, <laughs> um, just, in yeah, it goes back to what Inna said about like knowing which sector you're applying to. Although I'm not sure I knew really what special services was and it just happened to work for me. But I think also if you end up in a team that you don't like, not being afraid to try and move within MOTS because that's one of the things that MOTS offers and is really good for, I think. Brilliant, thank you. Um, we'll take the last question, actually, I'll change it up. Um, <laughs> hybrid working. So uh, Inez, I don't know if you could just answer that actually for the new question controls. How many days are you expected to be in the office? Um, for me, it's like however many I want to be really. Um, I live quite near the office and I think it's really mm -hmm. good um, actually being in the office and kind of meeting everyone. There's definitely some days where um, like I, maybe I want to go swimming at lunch or something or I, want to, I need to do something in my lunch break. And so I stay at home. Um, but yeah, it's so beneficial actually being in the office and meeting new people. Um, so just as much as you can. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely sometimes wake up and just think oh, another hour in bed and I'll work from home today. <laughs> but we are flexible. Yeah, I think the general very... McDonald policy is a minimum of two days in the office. But as you said, if you wanted to come in five days, you absolutely can. Um, if you, you know, want to do the minimum two and have that flexibility, then so. Great. OK, brilliant. Well, I'm conscious of time. So I think if we can do a uh, final closing word um, from from you, Sinyan, if that's OK, around any, I suppose, advice for graduates starting off in their career. Um, and then we'll finish up to today and I'll do some thank yous. OK, thank you. First of all, thank you very much to everybody make the time to attend this session. I think for maybe some of you know what you want to do. And uh, then if that's the case, try to stick with people in the area and to see because even what you want to do, the job can be very varied, speak to as many people as possible. And particularly if you have the opportunity to go to see their offices, or sit down uh, coffee time, ask them to explain what it's like, and then start apply for. And many people might be fall into the category that don't know what they really, really like. So if that's the case, for example, work on what's your strength 
And this strength eventually also took the people from as many possible people as possible speak with, go to the office environment for them to explain to you, and maybe within a day show different displays to see something you like. It, it particularly like in this set, so important because you get to work every day on it. It's better to be paid and enjoy working. So therefore, you don't think you are working; you just enjoy it. So. You, you're young and you're full of energy, full of ideas. Don't think, okay, I don't know what I'm good at. I do believe each individual of you got the strength, okay? It's very much yourself need to show your strength and let other people identify your strength and let other people to help you. Like Patrick, somebody said, ask the question and to see what you're good at, what you don't good at. Even just reach out to HR and people like Claire to just ask for some advice or send email, so on. And um, then here, the company to want to find the right people and for you, and also they want to help people to become really useful in the society. So I hope you all have, all have a great future in your career searching, in your job searching. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you. Yes, and just a final thank you from me, both to all of our speakers today for, for giving up their time to come along and talk to you about their exciting careers um, and for all of you today for joining as well. Um, just a note to say that um, any questions that we haven't got round to answer, and I've been desperately trying to reply while we're talking as well, multitasking here. Um, if there are any questions that we haven't been able to answer today in time, um, they will be collated after and we'll formulate um, responses to be shared with you. Um, thank you again um, ever so much for joining. Hopefully that's inspired you to, to want to come and work at Monmouth and Old. Um, and as I said, direct you to the website for current graduate applications for 2024 intake. Brilliant. Thanks all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Brilliant. Thank you.